The production team behind Love is Blind has allegedly pressured many cast members into extremely problematic situations. Now the cast has begun to fight back in these crazy expensive lawsuits, one of them being a whopping $4 million ouch, and they're punching back by using some surprising strategies you will be impressed by while at the same allegedly facing homelessness. Also, the issues and crimes they are being sued for are pretty insane and we are spilling it all. Despite that many contestants on Love is Blind seem to have had a good experience on the show, you will find it surprising that in reality, it's a whole different and dangerous game behind the scenes as these lawsuits reveal many secrets we will get to. Many lovers of this show know that not every engaged couple gets their stories told, so the production will select some couples based on an unknown reason or criteria and leave out the rest to continue with their engagement and marriage without being filmed. But the insane thing is that Renee Pochi and Carter Wall from season 5 were followed all through the production and they even made it to the altar. However, the production decided to erase their story without any tangible reason and this was the beginning of what led to one of the lawsuits against Love is Blind. All the details and speculations on why their story was left out and why she decided to file a suit will all be exposed as you keep watching. So, Renee mentioned that she said no at the altar to Carter while still going through the heartbreak from her failed engagement, Renee received a shocking call from the production, and the details were terrifying. She said, I got a call a couple of months before the show aired in August to let me know that our story wasn't going to be a big focus. Then, the production gave Renee the excuse they've made up for not showing her story, which is that her ex-fiance Carter was awful and they wouldn't want her to relive the experience. Also, they mentioned that the timing wasn't favorable and that their story would affect the season's momentum. Renee added that she didn't believe what they had told her, so she continued to ask them. The production replied that they would also cut the engagement and make her appear as just a friend with Carter in the pods, which was heartbreaking. According to Renee, the experience shaped and changed her life and not making the final cut felt like a betrayal. She insisted on not having it, which was the beginning of a crazy lawsuit. She also mentioned that she believes her engagement and wedding were cut for other reasons they refused to tell her. However, there's been speculation on why she was cut out. Renee's story may not have worked out on Love is Blind, but she quickly married someone else after shooting for the show. So people started to think she was dating someone else while on the show, but Renee maintains that she was single throughout filming and that being cut out is due to a shady detail we will get to soon. However, when she decided to let things cool off and focus on the love story she got outside the show, other issues relating to Love is Blind started coming up. Another Love is Blind cast, Tron Dang, which I can't wait to tell you everything about soon, filed a lawsuit against the production. And when Renee read the production response to that lawsuit, she felt triggered that they lied about their experience. I was not, I physically was not safe. I didn't feel safe and I addressed that with nothing being done about it. So even though she's being banned from promoting or talking about Love is Blind because of the non-disclosure agreement and her story being left out, she got angry and started to speak about it on podcasts and any chance she got. And that's when the issue became too expensive to handle. Regarding her experience on the show, Renee said that she connected with Carter in the pods and everything went well. Surprisingly, things continued fine while on their mini vacation to Mexico, even though viewers couldn't see that. So she said that she and Carter had the best fun and were an exciting couple till things began to take a dangerous turn. Renee said, but once we got back to Houston and back to the real world, I started noticing things I kind of ignored or blew off that were red flags I should have picked up on. Apparently these alleged issues were too heavy and Renee began to expose it all till Love is Blind had to react. Renee mentioned that Love is Blind set her up with Carter, who's a complete red flag, and put her in harm's way. So when filming for Love is Blind in 2022, Renee said that Carter had no money or home and was completely unemployed. But that's not all, as she continued by saying Carter was toxic, had severe issues with his parents, and was also an illegal substance addict. All of these were strange considering the production claims that they do thorough background checks and psychological evaluations on the contestants, which is why the cast trusted the production enough to sign in. But they lied as a former contestant. Marshall has a thing to say about this. Let's get into these background checks and psychological evaluations. Raggedy. Let me start with that, raggedy. Y'all know that one clip of the security guard who is is barely patting anybody down before he let him into the venue or whatever? That was that shit. 
so barely any checks are done based on this revelation as the production only believes what the cast says they are without deep research and all of these are beginning to bite back. All of the red flags that Renee saw but didn't take seriously started becoming real, making her unsafe. Firstly, although she had fun during the Mexico trip, she felt threatened by Carter in one of the unreleased scenes as things got physical between them. Carter became brutal with her and she alleged that all the crew members turned their backs and didn't rescue her. Instead, they stopped filming and left her alone with him, which was a scary situation for her. Unfortunately, Renee said the production advised her to make sure Carter doesn't get a hold of a weapon so she and others don't get hurt. So many strange things went down during filming and it keeps getting darker as we reveal even more in this video. From there, everything got even worse as Carter didn't stop at hurting Renee but ended up physically intimidating a camera crew member until the person had to quit. Then she added that Carter wasn't in love is blind for marriage as he always spoke down on her. Also, he would steal on set and in the fancy locations they went to because he was homeless at the time. Then, Carter would beg and persuade the other cast members to help him buy painkillers and also other unprescribed medications since he was broke and addicted. And there were signs from the beginning as he did something similar when they returned their phones after the pods. We got our phones back and his wasn't working, so he started freaking out and um, it wasn't, the bill wasn't paid. So he asked Milton to pay it for him, but like kept that a secret from me. Um, Despite being broke, Carter did an excellent job hiding his condition from Renee. He promised her many things during their engagement, like a vacation and a dream marriage, and he couldn't even afford lunch. Also, their financial situation wasn't discussed in the pods because they weren't meant to know that till they physically met. So, Carter deceived Renee throughout the experience, which the production also got to see. The show sponsored most of their dates during filming, and the only one-time camera crew wasn't with them, and they had to pay the bills themselves. You won't believe what Carter made Renee do. Oh, we did go on one, and I'm pretty sure we dined and dashed, but I didn't really realize it in the moment. But looking back on everything, I don't think he ever paid. It looked like a typical romantic moment at the time, but Carter made them eat without paying, and Renee later discovered it was because he had no money at all. Renee continued telling her agonizing experience, saying Carter brought another girl over to the shared apartment they were living in after the pods. Then he turned to gaslighting her and body shaming her after doing that. Amidst all these, Renee wanted out of the engagement so badly, but she couldn't leave. Leaving the show and dumping her engagement without the producer's approval would get her in trouble, and she would have to pay a $50,000 fine. Also, the producers blamed her for not wanting to give Carter a chance and asked her to keep filming in an unsafe and toxic situation. So she stayed and went through it all, only to have her story thrown out. However, she took it upon herself to tell it all on podcasts, even though she signed a non-disclosure agreement. And the shocking thing happened when the production company, Delirium TV, fined Renee $4 million because she broke her agreement by speaking about her experience. Renee revealed that she felt felt sick instantly, as she only got $8,000 and a traumatizing encounter to be hammered with a $4 million penalty. Luckily for Renee, she got the help of two well-known lawyers, Brian Friedman and Mark Garagos, who helped her look over the charges, and she's now suing the production company and Netflix for everything she suffered. Although the lawsuit also challenges the illegal agreements that reality TV shows ask of them, Renee added that she discovered why her story was cut out. According to the alleged information, Carter had a terrible look and the crew ignored these concerns regarding Renee's safety, which were all captured on camera. So Carter didn't want this exposed and he threatened the show, saying he would get rid of himself if they aired it. And that further shows that the production was well aware of the horrible things Renee claimed Carter did, making the lawsuit even more solid. Now, the deep and scary lawsuit that encouraged Renee to start talking about her experience was from Tran Dang, who's also from season five. Tran also got engaged from the pods, but unlike Renee, she wasn't 100% filmed or followed like other engaged contestants. So many viewers might not know her, but her story will shake you. Immediately after her experience on Love is Blind, Tran filed a lawsuit against Kinetic Connect, Delirium TV, who produced the show, and her ex from Love is Blind. According to this lawsuit, Tran suffered essay. She felt held against her will, and she was left alone in a dangerous situation with her ex-fiance, Thomas Smith. While on their trip, 
trip to Mexico, Tran said she was physically invaded as Thomas fondled her against her will and also exposed his uncovered body to her. Then the suit says she's confident the production got some of this on the camera because they were watching them nonstop. With all of these happening, they tried to downplay the incident on set by saying Tran wasn't just attracted to Thomas. Tran also felt false imprisonment, where they weren't allowed to leave the hotel rooms without being accompanied, and it was terrifying for her to be neglected while she was dealing with her mental health and an unstable partner in the show. Like Renee, she also made her concerns known to the production about wanting to exit, but she was told to film a final scene in which she would be told what to say to Thomas. Tran also said they had a limited food supply, but excess intoxicating drinks, so they could talk about things that could incite drama for the show. The production company had has denied all these by saying, we do not tell people what to say, what to do. We consistently tell people that this is their journey. This is their life to lead as they choose. We're there to follow it. They also added that Tron never informed the crew of the incident with Thomas, and they mentioned that they don't watch the contestants 24 seven. The production also denied ever knowing about trans safety concerns. However, this is an ongoing lawsuit that will be handled in court. They even added that the contestants had excess food and water while filming. Interestingly enough, this statement by the production company made Renee angry, and she started talking about her experience and exposing the lies behind Love is Blind. Before Tran and Renee filed their lawsuits, Love is Blind was in a similar situation where the accusations were almost identical. And this happened with season two contestants Jeremy Hartwell, Nick Thompson, and Danielle Rule. The suit was about how they were treated in horrible working conditions where the production walked all all over their rights. They had to work full time and longer hours, but were paid less than the minimum wage. With the $8,000 paid for being a participant and the hours they had to work, Nick reviewed their hourly pay to $7.14, which was very low. Then the production treated them like a contract worker, but told the IRS something different. As if that wasn't enough, the production allegedly fed them with intoxicating drinks rather than good food and water, which affected their judgment and made them say things on impulse. They were constantly being lied to, and Nick revealed he almost quit the show after discovering how they disregarded his partner, Danielle's health concerns during filming. According to Nick, he pulled through all these alleged issues because he found his ex-wife, Danielle, on the show. Hartwell also added that all their belongings, like passports, wallets, and phones, were taken without warning. They weren't allowed to have the keys to their hotel room and couldn't even have access to table water because they were locked in and could only move if monitored by the crew members. Nick also said they could be fined up to $50,000 if they left the show without permission. And now the production claims to have removed that clause recently as season six contestants were shown in a different light where they could leave. But at that time, there was a total disregard for their mental health. Danielle revealed that she told the production about her strange self-destructive thoughts while in Mexico, but they ignored her and didn't get her help. This lawsuit also revealed the clause that says engaged participants must be at the wedding no matter what could have gone wrong before then. Then they also included in the contract that no married couple could divorce until their final episode aired on the streaming platform. Also, Hartwell mentioned that he filed the lawsuit on behalf of Love is Blind contestants who have suffered the same fate. However, some are still afraid to to talk about their experience even anonymously, and that's because they fear being identified and going against their NDA, which could further put them in even more expensive trouble. However, the production company also responded to this lawsuit in a statement denying not providing mental health care. They said two psychologists were on the ground for season two contestants while they were in the pods. Also, they insisted the cast continued to have access even after the pods, but they've not commented on other issues issues raised in the lawsuit. But then Hartwell is determined to fight this injustice since he started his lawsuit in 2022. He even created You Can, an organization to help traumatized reality TV stars find justice. Also, the organization wants to stop future contestants from dealing with the same awful experiences. Interestingly, Renee got help from Yukin after being hit with a $4 million charge. They provided her with two influential lawyers to help with her case and emotional support. So it's not just the lawsuits that Love is Blind has to go against now, it's a powerful organization.
organization determined to stop them from exploiting people for entertainment and it will be a long but worthy ride.